Ah, the good old casino chips. Let's be honest, whether you've even stepped foot in a casino, or if you're a frequent visitor to one, you know about the casino chips. Especially those red and black ones with white in the middle. Yeah, you know them. Well, we also know that they are basically just different denominations of currency, but often in larger amounts, right? And that if we were to return them back to the casino cashier, after striking it big, or with the few chips left after gambling, we could get the real currency back. Now, this begs the question as to whether we'd be able to scam the casino for a guaranteed profit over a gambled one. Well, let's take a look at how we can or why we can't do that, shall we? But hold up a minute. Before we delve in any further, we'd like to ask you to smash the subscribe and like buttons and to share this video. Also, don't forget to turn on post notifications so that you can be notified whenever we drop our next amazing video. Okay, let's resume. You walk into the casino, passing by a few flashy and colorful lights, and make your way towards the dealer, where you can do one of two things that we mentioned before. Give cash and get chips, or the inverse. You now have to hand him some counterfeit casino chips, but you might want to rethink whether you've done everything right and have not let any errors slide past. Because counterfeiting casino chips is one of the hardest techniques to succeed in for those of you looking for a fast buck. But that doesn't mean it's impossible either. Still, casinos take huge measures to make sure you can't counterfeit their chips. You may assume that this sort of thing happens all the time, but creating a fake chip is time consuming and almost generally unsuccessful. One of the main things is that every casino's chip varies from casino to casino, which may also vary in terms of material, weight, color, size, texture, etc. This is to make each casino as well as its chips have values that feel different from each other, giving each casino its own personality, and making it something that you relate to and have different links with. But, of course, this makes the task of counterfeiting it incredibly difficult, as it means that you'd have to get your hands on the exact same set that the casino bought them from. And this complexity increases tenfold in immensity if the casino has some sort of branding on their chips. At first glance, the colors of these chips in each casino are usually the same, ranging from white to orange with different values. The way it works is that a white chip is worth $1, the red chip is worth $5, the green one is worth $25, a black one is worth $100, a purple one is worth $500, and finally, an orange chip is worth $1,000. That's 10 times the black one. But obviously, each color has a thousand shades, more than you could even imagine. So, even if all casinos have an orange coin for $500, each could have a thousand different shades of orange. Even if the scammers somehow managed to get the shades to be the same, Ed made sure to check for UV marks and keep the weight and feel consistent, each chip still has an inlay. This includes the casino, the denomination, and, depending on the chip's value, a variety of extra security elements. Due to holograms, microdots, and even color shifting ink, high value casino chips are especially difficult to replicate. Even some go as far as to have built in RFID chips, radio frequency identification, which are commonly found in high limit rooms in Las Vegas and Macau. Funnily enough, though, even with all these struggles just to make counterfeit casino chips, that might not even be the reason crooks don't make them. You see, because of KYC, know your customer, and anti-money laundering laws, every casino has to track high-value chips. While money laundering laws do vary from place to place, most countries have similar laws to each other. For example, the US government will not allow you to cash out more than 10,000 without identification and your social security number. Assume you're investing more than $500 or $1,000 in chips, purple or orange, the floor supervisor will then activate surveillance and snap your photo. As for the reason why counterfeit makers do not make them, I'm pretty sure that anyone should be concerned by the vast number of cameras and the potential to go back weeks or even months in surveillance footage to trace individual checks. And if you do attempt to buy in with high value chips, casino personnel will try their absolute best to make sure that they get your ID. And if you somehow make sure that they don't see it, then that will just make them even more suspicious. So, of course, people won't go for high-value chips, 
But what about lower value chips? Most counterfeiters stick to $100 chips because they're worth the time it takes to meticulously hand paint and replace the inlays. Fake inlays were previously available on the dark web from Asian companies. You could send the chip to them and they'd print the inlays for you. While this simplified counterfeiting, it also came at a high price. As a result, it's almost certain that the $100 chip was the most sought after. It's possible that US Customs has shut down some of these operations due to pressure from casinos or that they've just gone deeper into the dark. A person was discovered counterfeiting these black chips and was subsequently sentenced to 12 years in prison. And so, even if someone smuggles in some counterfeits, the chances of you actually getting one, especially inside a casino, are miraculously slim. And so, the counterfeiters have obviously realized that it's way easier to sell these chips outside of the casinos than in them. So, make sure that you are careful about what you're buying outside the casino, especially chips. Chances are, you might be getting scammed. Still, there is a chance for a bait and switch to happen, wherein your actual real chips get swapped for fake counterfeit ones. This has been a huge issue and has been so for quite a while now. Counterfeiting casino chips is a daring attempt that not many people have pulled off with success. Still, this doesn't stop people from attempting to counterfeit coins. In fact, there are many incidents of people trying to counterfeit chips and then failing miserably. For example, Neo Siu Hua, a Singaporean delivery guy, was arrested and sentenced to 32 months in prison for using counterfeit casino chips at the RWS Casino in Singapore. He had passed six $500 chips at the Baccarat table, but he lost them all in the game. The scheme was found the next day, and Neo pleaded guilty, saying that he had 92 chips ready to use. Well, that was quite foolish. Here's another example. Yolanda Michelle Hart was charged with six counts of possessing counterfeit casino chips in 2012, after attempting to defraud a casino out of $600 by using six $100 counterfeit chips. When she attempted to pay out her fakes, the cashier immediately realized something was wrong with them. Three more people were captured after she was arrested and accused of conspiring to use more counterfeit chips to trade for cash. And just one last story to really put a nail in the coffin on how people have tried and failed. Timothy Giardina, a high-ranking US military official, attempted to utilize counterfeit casino chips at the Horseshoe Casino in Council Bluffs, demonstrating that even the most responsible and high-ranking people may make bad decisions. According to the inquiry, he used adhesive tape and paint to turn many $1 chips into $500 chips. He was found guilty and demoted from Vice Admiral to Rear Admiral, as well as relieved of his duties as Deputy Commander of Strategic Command. He had a decent strategy, but needless to say, it wasn't flawless. Wow! What appears to be as simple as walking in and walking out with a large sum of money was as deceptive as the concept itself. There are certainly more and more criteria that are currently present and could sprout in the near future. But at the end of the day, the moral is that there are many ways to gamble and make a lot of money. But let it not be a gamble with you having to serve a prison sentence or not. And with that, we have come to the end of the video. Seeing as you definitely enjoyed the video since you made it this far, why not leave a like and subscribe while you're at it? Don't forget to turn on post notifications and drop a comment on something we may have missed out on. I'll see you again in another video, but until then, goodbye!